Hello everyone and welcome to the second installment of the Astroneer Calculator Build Along playlist. Now in the last video we covered how to break all of these inputs out from their individual digits to a series of buttons that we could trigger as a group to cause certain things to appear. Now I also replicated this on the first two inputs right over here, pay no attention to that for the moment. Um, so essentially we can break all these digits out into zero through seven as opposed to zero through nine over here And I explained last time that was because there are going to be three bit inputs and with three bits The max you can represent is seven. There will be more on that in just a moment um, So we only want to go up to seven buttons now I have also created at least the first individual counter uh, for our first input because I want to show you what the operation is going to be We will have a singular button here that when we trigger it It will allow us to cycle through 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 Before dropping back down to 0 and these will be the inputs that will be used in the operand when we go to calculate our final result um, so again while this does exist, I will be creating the second one from scratch so you guys can see exactly where I go. This was kind of like a proof of concept of the logic just to make sure everything made sense and also gives me a trial run just to make sure I can explain things properly and explain things thoroughly. So we're going to start by having just our little triggering button right there uh, as well as a second one that we're going to end up placing pretty much right in like the top right corner of where we want it to go. Um, so what I like to do when I have these triggering buttons is I like to send it right through and just at least place one um, so it looks like the button is going straight through before we break it off to where it's actually got to go. And because we're placing it on an individual item, we can use that technique where we can click on it anyways and it will still snap to it. Now what we're definitely going to be doing is we're going to be using the, again, the same method that we used to my left, but there are different ways that we can display the seven digits on the screen. We can do it in a kind of binary format, um, which is what we're going to be doing today, where we have the actual three bits physically represented, or we could do it in a counter where you don't have all of the bits represented, but you're essentially iterating through zero through seven in a particular order. Now, the way that you do that, the counter that we're not going to be doing, it's, it's, it's the exact same as the uh, dice that I made for Shoots and Ladders and Monopoly. Um, so that's why we're not going to be doing it is because it's, it's less, uh, it's, it's easier, it's simpler to do uh, in times of creation, but it's, it doesn't give you the full picture of how the math is actually working out when we do the calculator. So that's why I'm opting to do the, 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 the actual binary version. So I'm using generators to represent the bits um, just because this is something that I've done basically since the first calculator and risk computer that I built. Um, and I actually know that this works for a fact and I like this method, so I like to go with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a resource plinth and I'm going to give each basically an unlimited supply of carbon. And the reason we're doing this is just to make sure that we don't ever run out of power on these guys because it would be kind of annoying if you know, you're doing an operation and suddenly your carbon supply ran out and all of a sudden your bit's now not working properly. Um, so that would be kind of an issue. I'm also going to supply a work light to the back of these guys. Um, this is not necessary, but it just provides a little bit more of a visual cue as to what bits are on and what bits are off. So if you're not familiar with binary, then this might be just a very brief introduction, but I definitely implore you to look up a little bit more because it is pretty fascinating. Um, and if you are familiar with it, this might be a bit of a, re a, re a review, excuse me, but it doesn't hurt to always get a little bit of extra information. So binary can either be a zero or a one. And so right now with the generator off, that's a zero. When it's on, that is a one. And we have three generators here, and those are the three bits that we would be using. Now this is, because in computer language you index from zero, this is the zeroth bit, the first bit, and then the second bit. Now these each represent a power of two. So this is two to the zero, two to the one, and two to the two, hence the zero, one, two. And with those numbers, when this is on, since it's two to the zero, when it's off at zero, when it's on, it is one, because two to the zero is one. This is off at zero, because when everything, anything is off, it's a zero. Uh, but when it's on, it is two to the one, or two. And then this one is two to the two, or four. So you can do any combination of these, but the maximum is all of them on at the same time, which would be four plus two plus one is seven, which is why we are indexing up to seven for these inputs, because with three bits, that's the maximum we can supply. When they're all off, that is a zero, uh, which is why we do have our baseline being zero. 
Now, these three bits are each going to need to do certain things. So we're going to be using the power sensors uh, to quite our advantage with this, uh, this whole creation. So th there's going to be, there's going to ultimately be two sets of power sensors on these guys. Um, I'm going to set up both sets initially, and then I will explain what they do when we actually get to them. So first, just pay attention to this lower row right here. We have these power sensors in power gained or lost mode as the default. And ultimately, we're going to end up keeping them there. But this triggers whatever is connected to this cable pin when we turn when we supply or when we take away power. When it's in gained, it only triggers when it gains power, and when it's in loss, it only triggers when it loses power. It should be pretty above all in standard. The power sensor operation is not the most complex, which is very good for us. Um, in most cases, we are going to use power gained or lost, and in some cases, we will use power lost mode, which is what these back guys are going to use, and we'll cover why we do so in just a little bit. Now, what these sensors are going to do is these are going to basically index the different combinations that we need to trigger up these buttons. That being said, in order to index each button, we need three switches. And for eight different inputs, we're gonna need a three by eight array of switches. So let's start getting at least that array set up. So we're gonna have one, two, and three. Two, three, that's two. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Uh, and then we'll just fill in these guys right here. So the reason that we, again, we need a series of three of these is because this is going to allow us to essentially do a three input AND gate. Now, AND gates are it, a whole series of logic. And once again, if you're not familiar with them, um, I do implore you to take at least a little bit of a look at what like gates, logic gates are. Um, even just taking a quick look at Wikipedia is a very, very useful resource. Um, but that being said, AND gates in particular, they, they allow something to happen only when all conditions are met, which is why it's called an AND gate. And having three of these switches placed one after the other will only trigger this power sensor if all three of these switches are open. So essentially each of these switches is our input to our, is an input to our AND gate. Um, and that kind of basically makes it so that only if we have a certain set of conditions that will allow all these switches to be open, that's when we allow power to flow through. And that's when we do something in particular. Um, there are other different types of gates that work on different conditions, some of which are a little bit more complicated than others. But for now, we only really need to focus on the operation of an AND gate. Because again, we have our three inputs being our three bits. So with these sensors, um, we do need power to flow through here. So I am going to set up a little bit of a power um, splitting system that's just going to supply power. Um, it, it's it doesn't really matter um, how much power we're getting. So that's why it's totally fine to use these splitters. And hopefully I can place these at least relatively close just to make sure that we don't really, uh, we don't like get too crunched on space. It is a very poor habit of mine to think I have more space than I actually do. Uh, and therefore making things a little bit more crunched than they should be. Um, so I am taking an RTG here just because an RTG makes it very simple. Um, it just provides limitless power, so there's really no reason not to. Um, so I'm going to connect at least an input to each of these guys. Um, you can do this in any way you want. You can have an individual generator for each of these individual lines. It really doesn't matter. But essentially, you just need to make sure that you have power flowing through every individual channel. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to at least initially turn all of these guys off. And this is going to basically mean all those three input AND gates, well, none of the inputs are currently triggered. So what is actually going to trigger these inputs? Well, that is going to be these power generators over here. So this is going to be our zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we can connect these guys right now. So that's seven, six, five, oops. Four, three, two, one, 
and zero. Um, so again, this is a little bit outside of the range, but because we're connecting to a button, we can just uh, we can just hover over the button if we could see it right, and just it'll snap to it. Um, you, for some reason, again, in the last video, it wasn't really working for these display boards, and that's totally fine. There's, there's no harm in that whatsoever. Um, so currently, we have nothing being triggered right now. Remember, this zero input is triggered when all of these bits are off. And all of these bits are currently off, which means that these three conditions are technically met. We don't have it set up yet, but these three conditions are met because all of these guys are off. And if we go and check out our board real fast, we did see that we wired it up appropriately to zero, so that works out totally fine. Now, the next condition is going to be when it's zero, zero, one. So when it's zero, zero, one. Now, currently, we have the first two conditions met, but then the first condition is not met. So we're gonna leave that switch closed. The next condition, when this transitions, when this goes from zero, zero, one, this will transition to zero, one, zero. We have again, zero condition met, one condition, or zero condition met, one condition is not met, and then zero condition is met. Then after zero, one, zero, we go to zero, one, one, zero condition is met, one, one is not met, so we can leave those off. After that, we go to one, zero, zero, so one not met, zero, zero is met. Then we do uh, one, zero, one, so one, zero, one, this is the only condition met. Then we do one, one, zero, one, one, zero, that's the only condition met. And then one, 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 we have no conditions met. So the reason that I've been explaining that is because these will each flow to a power sensor that will trigger an appropriate of uh, the associated switches. So this is going to trigger every single one of these closest to the power sensor switches, because these are the switches that will hold the state or hold the condition of our zeroth bit generator. So in toggling all of these switches, right now we have 001. When we toggle this, this will turn this bit on and it will switch all of those switches. Now, because our 000 condition is no longer met, you have seen that this switch is now turned off, which means that we don't fl have power flowing through because we don't have our AND gate operating. Instead, we have the condition of 001, which we set up 00 as being accurate when this is off, but this was, this was off previously. But in turning it on, we now turn the switch on, open up our AND gate, and we have power th flowing through to our one digit. So that's gonna be the operation that we're gonna do here. We're gonna attach the second, uh, the second power sensor to the second switches, uh, because these will handle the second bit, the second condition of our AND gate. And then eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same for the third set of power switches. Now, again, this can be a little bit complicated to understand if you are unfamiliar with binary logic or binary gates. So generally, if you don't quite follow the explanation, please feel free to reach out and ask questions. I'm more than happy to explain how some of this more technical stuff works. But even still, following at least what I'm building and following what I'm setting up, um, hopefully that does give you a better idea of what, I'm, what my thought process is and what I'm kind of thinking of, rather than me just showing it to you and just saying, yeah, so this is our third bit, it triggers these switches, then these do this and this does this. It actually kind of shows you, it actually kind of shows me at least, connecting everything and doing what it's supposed to. So the next step is getting all of these to index one after the other. And the way we do that is with this other set of power sensors that we already have set up. So I'm gonna finally connect them and I'm going to set them to power lost mode because what you heard me counting but you didn't quite see me doing on the generators is going through how binary works. So initially, this will turn on. When this turns off, this will carry the bit to the next position and this will turn on. Then this one will turn on and then this will turn off and carry the bit to here. However, this one's already on, so it will carry the bit to here. So these will both turn off and then that will turn on and, and, and so forth. And then you'll do this one and this one, stuff like that. So it, it's a series of counting. I just wanted to make sure that we're back on zero because we have zero um, as, our, as our bits at the moment. And the way that we do this is we're going to have that button that we already set up leading to this button over here. This is going to toggle our first generator every single time. So it's gonna turn it on, it's gonna turn it off, on, off, on, off, repeatedly. However, every single time it turns off, when we lose power, we want to carry the bit to the next position. 
Um, we're not doing this on power gained because when this turns on, we don't want to do anything here. We only want this to happen when we are supposed to carry a bit to the next position. And if this generator is already on, we then want to carry the, the bit again. So when this turns off, we're gonna connect it to here. And ultimately, this is not technically connected, but if we did have a fourth bit, this would carry to here and it would just keep carrying until you reached your limit. So this is going to basically trigger exactly as I have counted. And if we have done everything properly, which I believe we should have, we will have a working input that will index from zero to seven at the push of a button. So we start at zero. Let me just angle this right so we can see better. We go to one, then we go to two, then we go to three, to four, to five, to six, and to seven. And when we press it one more time, because we're gonna carry the bit from one generator to the next one to the next one, and this one doesn't do anything, it will basically just turn all of them off and we'll be all set back at zero and ready to go again. So when we end right here, we go back to zero and we're all good. Now, I don't know if you guys did notice, but when we transition from like one to two or when we transition from three to four, there is a little bit of flash before it actually settles on a number. And that's just because there are a couple of switches that might take just a quick moment to, to read power flowing through appropriately. But that's it, there we go. We have our incrementing second input. And again, this is the exact copy of the first input that I did, but kind of as a practice just to make sure that I could do it right. So if you follow this video and you get this first input, uh, or well, the second input in this case, working properly, do replicate it so that you can get this input also working properly. Um, and that's everything you should need to know for this stage. Um, the next part of the video, we will probably be covering how we wanna set up these outputs. Uh, and I might need to think a little bit about this and translating some of that over, um, but I will be doing that outside of the video, obviously just making sure that we can do so properly. Um, so hopefully you guys did understand this. Once again, I do wanna keep saying, if you have any questions, please reach out. Either hit me up on Discord or Twitter or anything like that. Just please let me know, even comment on the video if you do have something that you need help with. I'm more than happy to try to work it out or try to make it so that you can at least follow along uh, if you get stuck somewhere. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this was a little bit more complex than the 